Good morning. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our 2022 Summer Youth Employment Certificate Celebration Program for all the young work of all the young people who signed up, filled out their application, got a job. We want to thank all of our managers, our directors, for all those who bought into this program. Uh, it was just a thought and a vision about five or six years ago, how can we get young people to be, do positive things and get off the street? And starting with 17 children to now over 150 children, uh, it's because of the hard work. And so we do want to recognize some important people, some dignitaries that are here today uh, that came out because they believe in children. Uh, Mr. Rick Alton of the Independent News, thank you for being here. Ms. Allison Patton, candidate for District 3 City Council. D.C. Rees, candidate for mayor. <laughs> and a sports writer <laughs> and, and a lover of children. Wes Marino, Escambia County Administrator. Wesley Hall, Deputy Administrator. Brian Wire, candidate for District 2 City Council. Walker Wilson uh, from uh, Porter, I mean, uh, On Bike, Pensacola. Lord <laughs> uh, and Robin Richard from Kalula Institute. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Sandra Smiley from Community Health, and Dr. Joyce Hobson from Human Relations Commission. Thank you so much for being here and joining us. Thank you. At this time, uh, we will have opening remarks and greetings from uh, the Escambia County Administrator, Wes Marino. Mr. Marino. Thank you, Commissioner. What a great vision Commissioner May had a few years back to integrate uh, the youth into the Scammy County for the Summer Employment Program. You know, the Scammy County does so many things. We're so multifaceted, and sometimes people don't realize everything that we do and everything that's involved in all the departments and activities and services that we provide. So it's such a great way to integrate the youth and expose them to different facets of the county, whether it be the legal department or facilities department or natural resources or engineering. We just do so many different things. And I'll tell you that being exposed to uh, the public service is, is a huge thing. Being exposed to how to show up for work, how to interview, how to conduct yourself, how to integrate and, and interact with the public, it, it is definitely a, a good skill to have. I will tell you that I hired on with Escambia County at the age of 21 working a labor truck, making $5.07 $5 an hour. And so I was a kid who took a job and wound up finding a career. So you never know how this exposure, uh, where, where it will take you, how this experience will affect you. I hope it's been a good experience. We've certainly appreciated and enjoyed having you guys on board with us. But I hope you'll take this experience and put it into action and always keep the county in mind. You know, we have we certainly have plenty of openings. So I hope you've had a good experience. I appreciate Commissioner May and his vision for this program. I believe it's something that we will continue to, to do as we move forward, and we want to be bigger and better. Commissioner May, I appreciate you and congratulate you on your vision. And young people, what a great inspirational story from Wes, who he said started with a blue collar job, uh, probably making about $5 an hour. And because our salaries are, are, are public information, uh, he's six figures times two, uh, just because he started something, he finished something, and now he's in charge. And I mean, Wes doesn't mind telling his story. He, he doesn't have the traditional uh, MPA or, or degree, but he has work ethic, hard work, uh, and now he's the administrator in charge just because he stayed the course. And so that's really what this is about, teaching you uh, to stay the course. And uh, when we did acknowledgments, I, did, I, I missed a few people because they walked in a little late. Uh, a person that motivates me each and every day, Ms. Sue Strong. Ms. Strong, thank you for being here. We do appreciate her presence. And Mr. Todd Harris from the Pensacola Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for being here. When we think about this program, you can have a vision, but you can't do it without staff. Uh, you have to have someone that buys into the vision, that believes in it, that's going to register children, recruit children, get the application, meet with the department heads. And uh, that person who's done a great job for us uh, is Ms. Jamila Richardson. Ms. Richardson, are you, she's probably working, but uh, please give it up for Ms. Jamila Richardson because she's really, her mother's here in the back, I think, but she's really uh, put her heart and soul. Uh, but she couldn't do it without having a great director and our human services director, uh, who's not just a director, but she actually is a manager. Uh, she's a programmer, and she stays engaged. So please uh, welcome Ms. Claire Long. Ms. Long. Good 
Good morning. I'm Clara Long. I'm the Director of Neighborhood and Human Services. And like Mr. West, I started down at the bottom as well. So I started as a courier driver with the county, and now I'm in the seat as a director. So I just want to um, say to you all that you all can be, y'all can start, y'all can, some of y'all can probably start at the entry level, not at the bottom. You can start in the middle. And so the sky's the limit. So with the show of hands, can you, who, who all is their first time in attending this program or being in this program? Okay. What about two years into this program? Three years into this program? Nobody's been here three? All right. What about four years into this program? They got permanent jobs. Woo! So see what I'm talking about. So these, these are the ones that has been in the program for three and four years that we're grooming. And we have hired over 20 youth that has come through this program. So if you want a job with the county, we are hiring. We got positions open. Please, please, please take advantage of these uh, opportunity to work in the summer youth program. Learn as much as you can. Don't worry about the job description. Don't worry about what they say. You come in and you learn as much as you can. So you'll take that with you wherever you go. And everything that you learn through this summer is only like six or seven weeks. Take it wherever you go and build up on that. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. And um, what a success story with Claire. Had she not cheated on my paper in college, she probably would not be here today. So, Claire, I'm glad I was able to help you out. <laughs> uh, at this time, we talk about collaborations and cooperation uh, between not duplication of, of services. Uh, and this year, we had the opportunity uh, to stretch our funds beyond the money that my colleagues and I were able to allocate it and do a partnership with Escarosa and uh, working with Darnell Sims and Dr. McBride. Uh, and Dr. McBride came to the table and said, you know, we will not let any child be left behind uh, because of lack of funds. So we are glad to say that our first year is in a great partnership with Escarosa. And we have joining here the executive director, Dr. McBride. Dr. McBride. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, I'm really glad to see the youth uh, have this opportunity. And one thing that we do know that you must invest in your future and so for all our employers at the table, parents and supporters, this is tomorrow's world and we have to be building upon that. And so I'm really glad to see um, the participation when I pulled into the parking lot and I was like, wow, this is really a good turnout here. And it should be this always because this is a great moment to say that our youth is looking forward to doing something great in the future. So if we can do anything for you, parents, employers, youth at Career Source Escarosa, please do come see us because we don't want to be the best kept secret. We want to be those people to help you find your dreams in your, in your dream job. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. McBride. And we look forward to um, the partnership, getting some money from the city of Pensacola next year to expand this program, uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Reeves. <laughs> uh, certainly. Um, we all, we love to get a word of inspiration, but there's someone who's written about our program, is on radio uh, daily talking about children, whether he's fighting for uh, Pine Forest or whether he's fighting for children at CAYs. He's always advocating uh, for District 3 and the children. Uh, many of you know his voice, you know his writings, you know his paper, you know his blogs. Uh, please join us in welcoming Mr. Rick Outson. Mr. Outson. I'm the father of three girls, so whenever I speak, they text me and say, Daddy, please don't cuss. Uh, I didn't succeed last night. I'll try harder today. Uh, all my kids participated in summer youth programs. Uh, they worked at rec centers. They learned the, the value of service. I cover a lot of politics. And I think the mistake people think that working in government is about politics it's not. It's about people. And y'all have been able to see some of the hardest working people that we have in this community who make a difference every day, not a lot of big ways, but a lot of small ways. And for you to have the opportunity to see that and to join into that possibly, there's not a better career to do. Because without the adults that are in this room, this county doesn't work. We saw it after Hurricane Sally. We see it every day. 
So before we go any further, let's give a round of applause to all the supervisors that are here. But I would seriously think about this opportunity that you've had and what you can do with it. The opportunity to work, to serve, uh, and, and the sky's the limit of what's possible. But the thing I think you've learned when you watch the people that you've worked with is it's everything you can do it. Maybe not now, maybe it takes time to learn some of the skills, but it can be done. So this program's a great program. I admire Lumen, Commissioner May, for coming up with it. I, I'm grateful that es Santa, uh, Escarosa Career Source has helped fund it. I'm sure the city is gonna step up in a big way next year. Uh, the, uh, and, but this is something that, that you've been part of something big, something that's gonna grow every year. And thank you for all, you're doing your commitment. You had to show up for work. You've had to do all those things. But you've been with some real true champions in the community that do things day to day that make this place one of the greatest places to live on earth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Allison. And the remarkable thing, not just well, West Marino to become the administrator or, or for Claire Long, who became a director, but we're very proud in five years that we have 17 children from this program who are not permanently employed uh, in this game you county with jobs, with benefits, with retirement. Uh, that's really the difference, and so we are very proud of, of those things. At this time, uh, we will have a video presentation. Hi, my name is Will Blankenship. I'm an intern here at ECAT. Um, I'm working in the accounting department with Mr. Cruz. Basically, what I do on a day-to-day -day is do filing, sorting of emails and whatnot, and um, so occasionally I go on the bus routes and document the locations and what needs improving. I've learned what goes on behind the scene to run an organization like this. There's a lot more that goes into it than what I initially thought and it was just really cool to see all the behind the scenes work that goes into making ECAT what it is. Uh, my name is Gloucester Ferguson. I work with the county in human relations. My daily duties, I file um, papers for them. I work on brochures, I type up stuff, answer the phone, transfer calls. Uh, what I've learned here so far is teamwork. Everybody really has their own um, specific area of what they do. And when one needs another, um, they always have somebody to, somebody to look back on. It's not just the one that does everything. It's in a unit. Um, something else I've learned uh, just by working here, showing them that I care and that I want to learn something for the future. Um, the little things like that, that can make a big difference in the future, especially for your career, their career, their path, your path. Um, it can inspire other people to show them that you're not too small. You can do whatever you put your mind to, you can do it, don't be afraid. My name is Jemiah Campbell, I am working at the tax collector's office in Warrington and a little bit about what I do is I help put people in the QList app which is basically getting them in line online. I also do a couple of things such as sorting paperwork and filing it and just helping out really all around. Um, I shut the door, I close out for the day, just small things like that. I've learned how even the small things help out a lot. I've talked to some of my fellow coworkers at the at the moment and kind of just seen how even when I do the small things such as, you know, just helping people get to the door or putting people in the line, especially people that aren't as tech savvy, it really helps out a lot with the others that are working so that they don't have to worry so much about putting people in line and also helping the people that they have in front of them. Another thing that I've learned is how to work with people. So we get people from ages 15, maybe even 14, all the way 
up and above 80. I've had somebody that's in their 90s, born in the 20, in the 20s, like 1920s. So being able to know how to work with people um, at certain ages, also having to adapt to certain things. Some people may not be able to hear as well as others. Some people may have problems with speaking. I've worked with a deaf, a deaf person. I've worked with um, people that don't speak English. So just kind of um, learning how to adapt to other people and also um, just learning how I can help others in a different way depending on what they need and how I can service them the best. Um, I think the best thing to do when it comes to working with people that may not be having a good day or they just may have had an issue that they don't know how to fix and they're frustrated is to kind of try to either one, put yourself in their shoes to realize why they're frustrated and try to help them the best you can or to remember that you are a professional and that even if this is not a job for your entire life, this is your job for now. And so you should take it very seriously and just be patient with people because you would want somebody to be patient with you if you were in that same position. Um, yeah, I think that a lot of times when we're in high school that we kind of just get careers that are typical, but we don't really think about the, the other things that people have to deal with, such as at the tax collecting office, is not just about collecting tax. There's much more than that. Driver's license. People call it a DMV more than they do actually a tax collecting office. So I definitely think that this does create a lot of opportunity for other students to kind of see what is available to them. And also seeing that there could be more to just, just sitting behind a desk and talking to people. Like people actually really enjoy being able to have those types of connections and having those conversations with people and helping them. And if you like to help people, I definitely think this would be a great place to kind of start if you want an internship here or even try to get a job at a tax collecting office. So technically, yes, I would consider working here. If I would pick anywhere, it would be at this office because I love the people that I work with here. I am currently in school for pharmacy, but I definitely think that this would be a great career choice for somebody that's interested in it. I think keeping your options open and kind of just uh, venturing out and kind of seeing what it's about is the best option for you. Um, I'm Damarian Smith, and this summer I'm working in the Scambia County Public Safety Office. Um, I've learned uh, variety of different things. Um, I've learned how all their computer systems work, how they receive their mail, how they ship out their mail, um, and just a bunch of things about emergency medical services. I've gotten a lot better at people skills. I've definitely become more of a people person, uh, being around a bunch of different people with different personalities. I've learned that um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in an ambulance. Um, it's a lot more than most people would think. Um, it's a really high maintenance kind of thing. My name is Tiana Jones and I'm working in the public safety office. I do believe that this job or any county job would be a good fit for me and others to grow in only because it prepares us for our future. Something I've learned throughout being in this program this summer is learning how to do different things other than what um, I've previously done in the work field. Um, I've learned how to uh, pre-bill, um, do a little mailing and different things. Some skills that I've learned um, being in the billing department is communication because that's something I do all the time and time management because I, I'll get like a certain amount of um, assignments that my supervisor will want me to do and so I have to learn how to manage my time regardless of how long the process may, may take but I have to learn how to manage my time. My name is Mayaria. Uh, I work at Ebbinwood Community Center and basically my job here is to make sure that the kids are on track and having fun and learning new social skills and organization skills and most importantly recreation. We are really big on recreation. From starting working here since I was, well volunteering since I was 12, um, it really helped me in the future to have good uh, work ethic, know how to talk to people, talk to grown-ups at such a young age, and also conflict, um, how to deal with certain conflicts with kids, and also just like one thing that I really love about it is that from the second week of you coming to summer camp, 
we're all like a big happy family. You know everyone's name, everyone just hugs everybody in the morning. Like it's just, it's, it's beautiful. I love how all of the coworkers are so close with each other and open with each other. Um, I'm basically friends with everyone. Everyone is uh, so outgoing and um, it's really a open space to just be yourself and also uh, professionalism. Um, so me personally, I wanna go into the Air Force as an officer and it really helps me build that stern character to be serious about whenever you tell someone, you know, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do, this is what allowed, this was not allowed, and uh, it's really, it's really, it's really easy. Well, I'm the oldest, and I've always had to take control of things and make sure everything is right and perfect, but honestly, I came in not knowing what I was doing. I just did everything from the heart, just off, just, just off the back. Um, I really built the responsibility of the kids' safety and their feelings. Um, something's going on at home. They feel absolutely open to come talk to me, and that is just that is so special to me. Um, just to be able to be there and be their support system without them having to feel like they'll be judged or something like that. It's just, yeah, I, I feel like responsibility and being that missing piece to the camp when I'm not here is just it's just so like uplifting. So when I am here, I feel so wanted and yeah, I love it. I, I definitely feel like a big role model to a lot of the kids because a lot of them um, will will ask them certain things like who's your hero or who's your role model? Who do you look up to? Who's your idol? I kid you not. So many kids say May, May, May. I'm like, oh my God. It just touches my heart. It touches my heart every time. And it really helps me push and it helps me stick to giving back to my community and wanting to actually make a change and a difference in this community and being that emotional support for every child that needs it. Thank you, and that was done by some of our young people who worked in our PIO department. So let's give them a, a applause for. <laughs> so now you have uh, seen the video, you've been introduced to our students, and now we're gonna let you meet uh, five special people from all five districts uh, in person. Uh, from District 1, Tiana Jones, a recent graduate of Pine Forest High School in Public Safe. Tiana, please come forward. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Tiana Jones, and I'm a 2022 graduate from Pine Forest High School. I would first like to thank Commissioner Lumen May for creating a summer program such as this for the youth so we can get a touch of the real world. Real world. I also would like to thank Ms. Miller for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all today. Working in, this, working in the Escambia County Public Safety Office in the building department has given me the opportunity to be responsible and learn new things. I learned valuable lessons being in the program, such as being held accountable, paying attention to details, taking the initiative to look into things, and further investigating into cases. Some other skills I learned has given me the opportunity to grow and learn a new skill set. The skills that I've learned and mastered has offered me the opportunity to continue my employment full-time at the Escambia County Public Safety Office in the Building Department. In my closing, I would like to thank Lumen May and Ms. Shamilla. And last but not least, I can't leave out my wonderful supervisors, Ms. Tamika and Ms. Chandra. Thank you guys for trusting me to do what is asked of me and also creating a nice workspace for me to, for me to enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
and the best part of the speech, now she has a permanent job. So it's good stuff. Our next speaker from District 2 is Darren Atkins, who works in our Public Safety Department. He just graduated from Pensacola Christian Academy and plans to attend Pensacola Christian College in the fall. Darren? Good afternoon. My name is Darian Atkins, and I'm a 2022 graduate from Pensacola Christian Academy, and this is my second year in the program. I want to first thank God, who is the head of my life, and thank Commissioner Lumen May for creating this program to give young teens like me an opportunity to experience the workforce. I would also like to thank Ms. Jamila Richardson for giving me the opportunity to, pe to speak for you guys today. I worked in the Scambia County Public Safety Building Department. While working in the building department, I learned a variety of skills, such as customer service skills and how to pay attention to details, which came in handy when I needed to reach out to the local hospitals to verify patients' demographics, date of birth, and address. I also helped process the email invoices so, they, so that they will be sent out in a timely manner. This job has taught me how to be dependable, accountable, precise, and learn how to be a team player. In closing, I feel that the skills that I have acquired has prepared me to be a future has prepared me for my future job endeavors. I am now more confident in my job skills to be an effective employee. Again, I would like to thank uh, Commissioner May for continuing to fight for this program year after year. And I would like to thank my supervisors, Ms. Chandra and Ms. Tamika for always being available and creating a great work environment. Thank you, Ms. Atkins, and congratulations. Next, we have from District 3, uh, Ms. Jamai Campbell, the tax collector office in Warrington, a graduate of Washington High School and attends the University of Mississippi, where she'll be a senior this year. I made my first mistake this past week. Me being the perfectionist that I am, I was so disappointed and upset with myself that I beat myself up over it. And I was mad because it was such a simple task, but my coworkers did not let me have my moment. My work sister, Miss Brittany, snatched me up and took me to my work mother, Mrs. Janie, and they both made sure that I knew that everyone makes mistakes. And they also made sure that I knew that no matter the mistake you make, it's not the mistake, it's what you do that fixes the mistake, how you respond to it, and if you actually learn from it. Good afternoon, my name is Jemiah Campbell and I am 20 years old. I attend the University of Mississippi where I will be an uprising senior this year. I'll be getting my bachelor's degree this upcoming spring and I will be getting my doctorate soon after. I also work at the Speaking Center on campus. I am a speech, con oh, thank you. I'm a speech consultant on campus as I work at the Speaking Center. So I was given the opportunity to work at the Warrington Tax Collector Office. This is my first year in this program. Here I was able to develop characteristics and skills needed to help the public. Working with the staff allowed me to make connections, hear wise words, and be taught life lessons that have developed and grown me in this short period of time. Without being aware, I was able to be exposed to a similar environment of which I will be working in once I finish graduating and getting my degree. Working with the public will be vital for my career, and I got the opportunity to work with such supportive people and work with people, as I said, from teenagers all the way to people born in the 1920s, which is very different from what I'm used to at school. If I could put all of what I learned and developed in a sentence, I would say that I developed proper customer service and teamwork skills. And I also learned that small tasks also contribute and that you can, make your, you can do better after mistake if you know how to overcome obstacles. During this internship, I was exposed to real life situations and was able to handle the pressure with the support and guidance of those around me. I hope that each of you have your experiences and that you're able to take them with you. I hope you learned something valuable. And I want to say thank you all for this experience and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. From District 4, Kayla Burnett attends Pensacola State College, majoring in journalism uh, with only three classes left till she graduates. Come forward. Good afternoon. 
My name is Caleb Burnett and I'm 22 years old and I am majoring in journalism at Pensacola State College. Um, what I would like to say is uh, thank you for letting me be in this program. I would like to thank Blue Arbor for taking the time on uh, getting our hours straight and for the time tickets. I also like to thank uh, Jamila Richardson for and everyone else for um, putting this program together. If I wasn't in this program, I wouldn't be able to learn so much things going on in our city. Um, I would also like to thank my director and chief operator, Walker Wilson and Emily. Um, thanks to them, I was able to learn more about our downtown, what's going on downtown and about the life and the city life of downtown itself. Thanks to them, I was able to get more information about my city. Um, I would also like to thank my grandma for getting me into this program. I really do appreciate for being in this program. I do work two jobs, so um, learning more about my city really taught me everything that's going on in our city, and I would like to be more in tune with my city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burnett, and I know you had a great experience at DIB. Uh, from District 5, Gloucester Ferguson, Pine Forest High School recent graduate. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Gloucester. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to work with you in the 2022 uh, Human Relations uh, Summer Youth Program. Uh, I have learned so much these eight weeks. I have met wonderful people that has let me know to move forward and never give up and to do what's right. And just because summer is over doesn't mean you know the friendships have to end. Uh, I'll keep in touch with them. You know, if I have a problem, uh, I can always talk to them, speak to them, uh, give them a little word. Uh, and if I have a question, I know they'll be delighted to answer. Um, Thank you so much for everything. Thanks, Gloucester. Good job. And we are so happy for the young people to be able to share their story. I mean, it's always a challenge to get a microphone and speak in front of people. And so, although you may be working, I mean, for many of us that have to do it you know, daily, uh, it's still challenging. But for someone who's never had to speak, uh, uh, what an awesome challenge and what an awesome job by these young people uh, to grab the microphone. So give it up to the young people <laughs> that had enough courage uh, to come over. So. At this time, we're glad to have our partners, and we're going to call Ms. Perez from CVS and uh, Mr. McBride to present uh, their certificates. Uh, our biggest private provider of uh, letting young people work this year was CVS, and we all know how huge it is in each of our communities and each of our districts. So we want to thank your, your entire staff and the CVS family uh, for helping us out and taking so many of our young people. Ms. Perez. And when they call your name out, young people, you can just walk up and receive your certificate. And they'll grab a picture with you and Mr. McBride. All right. Well, I did not know I was getting the microphone. Hello, everybody. Um, could, oh, hold up. start this way you want to go to the next one all right can we have Jameer Hartley is Jameer Hartley here today no nope. there you are <laughs> we have a lot of kids I hope you know I hope you're ready <laughs> congratulations all right there you go you want to get a picture That's your turn. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and then can we get Jacory? Is Jacory here? There he is. Oh, 
Jacory got another one. Oh, he did get two. Darnell, do you want to call him out so you can call him while we get the next one? Oh. And can we get Gregory Thomas, please? Gregory here? Gregory? Yep, there he is. And little pep in your step. Let's go. We got a lot. <laughs> Elijah Jernigan. Elijah. Is Elijah here? Nope. And Londarius Hayes. Londarius here? Yep, there he is. Come on up. Thank you. And we have Mariah Long. <laughs> Mariah, there you go. Lanisha Sinkfield. Lanisha? Yep, there she is. Is Akila here? Is Akila? No. And Shamara Wiggins. Michaela Stutz. Michaela. Michaela. Nope. And LeBron Jenkins. LeBron, there he is. Kennedy Campbell. We have Kennedy here. No. And Janaya Brumfield. And Isaiah Anderson. Nope. Hazel Smith, I saw you earlier. Hazel. Where's she at? You sure you saw Hazel? Mm hmm I saw Hazel. She's here. Well, we'll come back to Hazel later. Hold on, this is also Hazel. And Elvis Brumfield. Come on up.
All right, thank you. Next one. Do we have Nevaeh Moss? Is Nevaeh here? Yep, there she is. Come on up. There you go. Thank you, Nevaeh. I don't know if I can. Is Ricky Lawson here? Nope, I don't think I see him. All right. What's it, Zaira? Zaira Fraser? Yes, no? No? Regina Robinson. There you go. <laughs> Do you have hers? All right, thank you, Regina. Jordan Johnson. We have Jordan. Yep, there you go. <laughs> thank you, Jordan. Zion Wesley. Jakaria Carter. No. Hold on. These are the store ones. You want to announce them? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Amaya's not here? You're not here. That's quite enough unless CBS will open some more stores. I <laughs> know. <laughs> No, we did not call Tamaya. Do we have Tamaya here? Latrell Woods? No. Did I call? Did I? Was there someone from CVS that is here that did not get a certificate? No? Okay, well, we have a few more kids. I'll make sure that they get their certificates, but thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Give it up for all those workers and to CVS and your staff. I mean, um, what a great private partnership, so we certainly appreciate it. So. So at this time, uh, we're going to call up, I think John's here, uh, uh, our supervisor representing the animal shelter. Do we have uh, our staff from animal shelter to present? If not, we're going to ask Wes Marino to come up. Caleb Campbell. It's Caleb Campbell here. Here he is. <laughs> Joseph or Joshua Dogan. Joshua Dogan. There he is. Okoye Lewis. Okoye Lewis. I don't see a Koye. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Let's go for the animal shelter. <laughs> Next, we'll have Dr. Joyce Hobson to present human relations. Whenever she wears her blue, she walks a little slow, so everybody can see her outfit. It's all right. Oh, it's supposed to be Sabrina? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, she got on blue, too. Come on, Sabrina. 
You, come on, no, you got, no, no, you got blue, come on, no, no, come on, we don't mind. Well, never mind. Yeah, it's only one. Glossary Ferguson. Do we have the representative from Building Services? Ms. Jennifer. I usually follow John. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we had two great ladies this year. Tamaya Hull. <laughs> and Bailey Taylor. And normally our department would be considered dull, but Ms. Tamai got to learn all about contractor licensing. That's great, huh? That's a lot of power. This one's yours. This Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you for the training. We, you, Jennifer does just a great job for us in training young people and, and old people like myself. Um, community corrections, pretrial diversion. Do we have a representative here? Deshaun Brundage. Um, he, uh, is Deshaun here? Uh, okay. I didn't think he could. And, and, and Deshaun Bondage, uh, what a great young man throughout this program. His mother died about two weeks ago doing this program, and the first thing he did was call and still came in to work. Uh, and so let's, even though he's not here, let's give it up for him because he continued to work uh, even in the, the tragedy that he had in his family. Alexandria Newells. Thank you. Best thing to do is work for community control and not be under community control. Uh, next, <laughs> yeah, th thanks Rick, somebody caught that. Uh, do we have a representative from facilities management? Remind me to sit a little closer next year. <laughs> um, we, too, had uh, two very good uh, youth uh, with us this year, uh, David Butler and um, Caitlin Solly. I knew I'd mess that name up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, have them come and uh, get their award. I told David I was going to make him make a speech this year, and he about passed out in my office. And we'd like to thank facilities management and their staff. Uh, we have a program right behind this building when you go out, a renovation project in our block-by-block -block workforce program where young people are renovating a, a house right behind this center uh, that's going to be an affordable housing for someone from this neighborhood, and the young people are performing it. So we appreciate facilities for helping with that. <laughs> Community and media relations. Do we have someone? We also had two really incredible women in our department this year. Um, they are CMR veterans, so we were so glad when they came back. Um, they have done everything from shot commercials to attended events. Um, they did everything we asked them to, which was excellent. Um, so I would like to take the time to recognize Michelle Johnson. Yeah. 
Danielle Leatherwood. And Danielle Leatherwood. I'll let you get at the middle. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for your hard work. There will always be a spot at CMR for you. Thank you. And thank Danielle. Danielle also worked in my office, and so she did a great job uh, kind of doing both jobs. Do we have a representative from Public Safety? We too, we had, a, we, had, we had great kids this year and we were really honored to be able to work with them. Uh, is Jalen Montgomery here? I don't think I saw Jalen. All right. Kendall Atkins. Darren Atkins. <laughs> Tayana Jones. Marion Smith. Ariana McCaskey. Thank you. Do we have someone for development and governmental services? So we had an awesome young lady in my department uh, in the uh, zoning side, Jasmine Montgomery. Uh, unfortunately, she's not able to be here today, but I will happily accept her certificate on her behalf. <laughs> uh, in the GIS division, we had Jaden Lewis. Jaden. Next, we'll have Mr. Todd Humbles from the library. Uh, and we're always thankful to Todd because when we started this program, he has always uh, been the guy that's taken more kids than anybody else. So thanks, Todd. Right. Thank you. And uh, are the branch managers here? Susan White, uh, Rachel Wallace, Mike Toronto. Any of you here? Come on up. You guys worked with them day to day. Um, yeah, we have employed uh, five youth so far through this program. 
Um, we expect to employ a couple more starting this fall. Most of our employees are coming through the part-time service, but we have actually hired some full-time as well. And, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so um, Ms. Haley Haig. I'm gonna call everybody up. Sorry, uh, Kara Haig, or Kara, I'm sorry. Uh, it is Kara, okay. Uh, Shanice Allen. Okay, so we got. We're gonna get them all up. Uh, Jada Benson. Megan Haig. Okay. Okay. Uh, Addison Jenkins. Ayana Nickerson. Uh, Jasmine Payne. The, the Paynes aren't here. The Paynes are They're not, not here. able to attend. Okay. Okay, and Joseph Payne, which they were not able to attend. So. Get a big picture. All right. Come on in, everyone. We'd like to get that group picture, but give it up for our, our library when reading. And these young people who were working in, I went in the library and they were working with young people. And as Todd said, we've gotten five people who have permanent employment with this Camden County that came through the library system. It says a lot about this program. Thank you, young people. We really appreciate it. Todd, we appreciate you. Just real quickly, um, we do have Bellevue Library opening soon, mid September, hopefully the 16th. Um, we also have uh, American Rescue Plan money has give us funding that we now own the former Masonic Temple here at Brownsville just a few hundred feet away. We're hopeful a couple years here we'll have another full service library for this area. Absolutely, we're getting a library right here in Brownsville at the old Masonic Lodge. Thank you for your hard work. So maybe we can employ five more young people. Next we have our county attorney office. I saw Ms. Rogers here. She's an ex-athlete so she'll run right up here. She's a lawyer, she bills by the hour, so she wants to go quick. The staff at the county attorney's office enjoyed having two super young people with us this summer, Jordan Hayes, Braven Hicks, Thank you, and we thank our attorney's office. We always have to have fights on how many people she's going to take. She wants more than we can give her. N now we'll have natural resources. I don't know if Chips or someone's here. So we had uh, two great uh, youth working with us in the Water Quality and Land Management Division. First one I'm going to call up is Ricky Camacho, and then Philip Strom, why don't you come on up with her also, okay? As they're coming up, I want to acknowledge Philip. He's one of the three-year graduates. He's been in our program three years. He knows everything we do. These kids got to see a lot of stuff that the county does on water quality. Thank you, what a great experience. Um, next is the supervisor of election. Then we got Miss Sonia Daniels. Thank you, Commissioner. So our first, uh, we had two students, and they have both had a little bit of baptism by fire and during an election cycle. Uh, but our first one is Ayana Phillips. Ayana, if you'll come on up. She's been working front counter voter services, uh, so she is definitely on the front lines, and there's a 
certificate from the commissioner and from Mr. Stafford. And the bag is yours also. And our second student is Virginia Morrison. Uh, Virginia, come on up. Virginia's been working side by side with me and one of the new trainers in election workers. So she's been seeing that side of the house as we try and prepare 600 folks before the election in August. Thank you, Sonia. Thank Mr. Stafford as well. Yes, do we have the representative from Escambia County School District, George Stone, Jay Hall? Do we have the representative here? Thank you. All right, uh, the school district has a lot of different departments. So the first one that we'll call out is the department that we work with. Uh, Matt Sims, come on up. He worked with the Employee Fitness Center. I had Dalen Johnson. He worked with the um, Elementary Science Department. I'll take it. We have Louis LeGrant. Noah Montgomery. Kieran Taylor. Kieran, are you here? No? Okay. And Jonas Neely. Thank you to all of our youth who helped us out this summer. <laughs> Thank you to our partners at Escambia County School District. Next, we'll have Extension Services. If we don't have anybody for that, Wes, that's why they pay you all the big bucks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Layla Simpson. Thank you, Wes. Next, we have Leroy Williams in the Ebonwood Community Center. Yeah, if you have any of your staff, they can come. Okay. Let me start now. Jamar Benson. Jamar. Thank you. Nehemiah Chance. Mayaria Coates. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kayla Harmon. Britton Henry. Benjamin Hooker. Ashton Hudgens. Kennedy Hutchinson. Christopher Legg. Benjamin Rudolph. Give it up for the Ebonwood Community Center. Uh, over 200 children, a, a great partnership with Oak Crest School, uh, and a great ceremony and great young people. Turn around, take a picture.
Ms. Carla Thompson, Brownsville Community Center. Thank you. It was definitely a team effort in order to make this summer camp a success. And we're just glad that everything went as well as it, it did on today and throughout the weeks. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Charles Dixon. <laughs> Kendaria Brooks. Kavaria Brooks. Jacquees Williams. Quinn Javius, he's not here on today, but a great worker. And we have Coach Saunders, um, Coach Trey, and Mr. Lewis, Coach Lewis, Edward Lewis, I saw him in the back. Um, great work, everyone. We appreciate you all. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. All the great work, all the great educational programs we ran at Browns this summer really enhanced our students. Next, we have engineering and construction management. All right, so engineering as a whole, uh, Chris, I got yours uh, uh, with Ty, but Romeo Wilson was with construction management. We were blessed to have him. Uh, he got out with surveying and we sent him out, checked out some jobs and, and when it was raining and you can't get outside, he was helping us scan some flat files and everything. So he got to see the fun stuff and the not fun stuff that we got to do. Um, but we really appreciate him, Mr. Romeo Wilson. Thank you very much, man, we appreciate it. I'm Chris Phillips. I'm the uh, transportation engineer, and this year we had uh, Ty Jones come join us. Uh, we put Ty to work. Ty uh, did some, uh, he helped set a signal box, and we had him out doing uh, striping and helping out with signage. And ultimately, when we had a need in the toll booth uh, out at the Bob Sykes Bridge, when Yana found out that we had Ty, she had already met him, and she begged for him to come down, so we're trying to find him a permanent spot down there. So thank you, Ty. There you go. Congratulations. Next we'll have Neighborhood and Human Services and CRA Agency. Claire Long. Never mind. Tax collector office. Is there someone from the tax collector's office? No, you can just wait. I mean, we were looking for you, but it's fine now. Thank you. First, I'd like to say thank you to the parents for trusting us and letting us have the blessing of your children this year. We've had a great time. We've had some good uh, relationships over the last few years. Some of our, I know one of our best employees came out of this program. So I'd encourage you supervisors to keep hiring them and watch for those superstars. You heard from Jemiah and some of these guys today. The future of Pensacola is in good hands. So let's, uh, Frederick Benjamin. We've got Jemiah Campbell, Taylor Johnson, she's not here, Sierra Lomax, and Brianna Nobles. 
<laughs> Kayla Burnett. Good job. Good job. Good job, Kimson. <laughs> Let's give it up for our tax collector. They do a great job. They take all of your money. All of your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's give it up for Mr. Longford, who really does a great job with our young people. And if you need another job, just call him at the fair. He'll give you another job. N now we have our mass transit, ECAT, Rodriguez. While we're getting to that, just getting our extra certificates together. Uh, so it was a voice in my ear at the beginning of the program as being the mass transit director. Uh, having that voice in my ear tell me that, hey, uh, I know you're short staff. Uh, I know you don't have the actual current managers, uh, I, but you got to participate in this program. And the reason why you got to participate in this program is because, uh, first, in order for individuals to be able to be something, they have to first see it, right? And so uh, just having opportunities to have our two youth that we had in our program, just being something that they can actually uh, uh, strive, especially with me being, being from this community, uh, being able to just help our youth see and eventually be the future of our community. So uh, I had, we had Mr. Tyree Johnson and we had Mr. William Blankenship. Yeah. And I didn't see Tyree, but Mr. Blankenship, we want to make sure you get your certificate and Ms. Angela, excellent support from my staff here. Uh, we got bags for them. So just thank you so much. Get up on mass transit. Next is Parks and Rec, Michael Rose. Appreciate it, Commissioner May. Uh, we had two great youth employees this year. Sarah Jones, uh, first, she is not with us today. Um, she is in Louisiana competing in a national Latin uh, competition, which is way above my head, but uh, definitely qualified to come work for Escamia County. Um, and also, I saw Tuntrell Abney here earlier. He may have had to duck out. Uh, I don't know, we may have called him for one last field prep over at a facility, but uh, I saw him running around earlier, but if he had to duck out, we'll make sure he gets his certificate. Thanks again. Thank you, Director Rose. Next, we have information technology. This year, uh, we had one uh, student, uh, but we're in, in information and te technology. We're proud to say that we have three uh, full-time employees in IT that came out of the program. So uh, we're really, we're really uh, proud of being a part of this program, and we really appreciate it. So uh, our student this year is Braden Forrester. Next, we will have CRA and Neighborhood and Human Services. If you can find them. All right, for the CRA, we had two uh, students this year. Uh, one, Michelle George. And the second one is Jason Lewis, but he's not here today, so I will accept his. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for 
for neighborhood enterprise division. Oh, go ahead, take a picture. I'm sorry. No. Oh. So for neighborhood enterprise, we're going to have, um, if you can call out these two. Um, yes, we, uh, Jihad Ball. Jihad Ball. And Mondasia Robinson. And, and Mondasia Robinson. Mondasia Robinson. Oh, I did. Oh. And last but not least, we have Destiny Page, Paget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Claire, Claire has a tough job running it and putting young people to work. Next are two people in my office, Mr. Brian Fields and Mr. Edward Lewis. I've not seen them all summer. I don't know if they're still working for me, but at least they, at least they got a check. Actually, two young men that I'm very proud of, they're both going to college. I both coached them since they were four years old, and now they're both going to school in Leon County, and we're very proud of both of them. And they're pretty good basketball players. Uh, at this time, this year we did something special. Young people who have been in our program, uh, we had case managers uh, through Escarosa, through Dr. McBride and Darnell, that were not only able to learn how to run a program, but to go out and help manage a program. Uh, and that's part of paying it forward, uh, that Commissioner May won't be here, Claire won't be here, Ms. Richardson won't be here. Who do we turn this program on to? And so when I was a kid, I worked for Darnell Sims in the summer employment program as a case manager. And so one of the components we wanted to add this year was add the case manager so young people would understand and payroll, background checks, placement, and those type of things. And so we had a group of young people. Uh, many of you recognize them because they put on the gun violence summit. Uh, they put on the mental health summit. Uh, they've done things outside of their career. And just on last week, they decided to do a school giveaway. And so they didn't go out and just ask for money, but they got together and took money out of their pockets, out of their last paycheck, and they went to Walmart, and they purchased the school supplies to give away and to pay it forward. So we're proud of this next group that Ms. Richardson is going to introduce. Jordan Palmer. Chase Rogers. Alani O'Neill. Javaris Carter. Zaniah Clark. And Calandria Long. I'm grateful this year for being able to have the youth that I did have to um, help me go out and manage everything. Um, this year it was a little bit different, so therefore it was a little bit more that I had to do. But I'm thankful and I'm grateful that we had the youth that we had, and um, hopefully we can do it again next year. Thank you, Escarosa. Uh, this year we worked with uh, for-profit uh, organizations and businesses to give the young people the opportunity to see what it is to depend on yourself to get up every morning because if you don't get up, you don't get paid. So we have some of those businesses with us here today and I would like for them to come up uh, who have our students involved in their, in their business this year. I think they have a Kaku Institute, if you want to come up. Uh, I think uh, United Way was involved. If anyone from United Way, they can come up. Uh, Auntie Annie's, anyone here from there? And we also reached up to Century this year to try to get some more students involved. Uh, is anyone from the city of Century here? Uh, Metro Transportation. CVS has already been, uh, has already been up, but they've had people involved in Century 
CBS up there also. Are there any other employers who are here who have some of the students, had some of the students this summer? Aaron Ball. Aaron Ball, that's right. And when I call out the names, uh, Dr. McBride and the, the uh, business would be there to present the certificate to the youth. First of all is Trinity Wilson. Yeah. Jaleel Cooley. Samaya Brooks. Cool. Samaya Brooks, Hannah Johnson, <laughs> Jada Caesar, <laughs> Sanaya Lewis. To Leah Souble, <laughs> Ladesia Daniels, <laughs> right there, <laughs> Miana Davison. Sanaya Lasur. What's her name? Kiana. 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 Yamila Lewis, Zahara Butler, Keondale Rivers. Dale Rivers, <laughs> Arizona Figueroa, <laughs> Messiah Tribute, Minusie Lewis, <laughs> Reasia Jones, and Maya Rudolph. Thank you all, and thank, for, thank you to the employers who helped out this summer. Appreciate it a lot. Keyshawn and Naquan, stand up real quick. Got to give a shout out. We'll get you guys a certificate. Everybody give them a hand.
They fulfilled 2,000 video brochures for us in less than six weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else we may have missed? If so, we'll have your certificate before we leave here today. Thank you. Again, thank you for our private partners because it's great to work in public sector and government. Uh, sometimes you get the opportunity to work in private sector. I hope that something's been said. People, young people majoring in journalism, we have writers here, technology, we have technology people here, public sector, public sector people. Uh, the only thing that you can do, young people, is when you become successful and you become the manager and the director, you look back and you create an intern program and you give someone an opportunity for a job that otherwise wouldn't get that opportunity unless you had compassion and passion in your heart to help somebody else. And so we want to thank the parents, we want to thank all of our community partners, we want to thank our elected, our candidates, uh, all those who participated in this program. Because it is more costly sometimes to train uh, than to just go out and hire. But I think the greatest investment is in human capital. So as we close, 100 years from now it really won't matter what your position is, the title that you held, how much money you made, or what positions that you were able to get in community or in society, but the only thing that will make a difference is where you're important in the life of a child. And I say that each of you, whether you're the parent, whether you're the manager, whether you're the director, or whether you're just a, a, a aide that employed somebody, you made the difference in the life of a child.